Welcome to MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic. Unfinity is the first onset in Magic the Gathering history with Eternal Legal cards. And in this video, we're going to review every Eternal Legal rare and mythic rare, some commons and uncommons, in addition to a list of 10 cards that can make the biggest impact in the EDH format. Mira the Magnificent is a 2-4 legendary human performer for 2 in it Colors. Whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell from our hand, we open an attraction. We can pay X, tap Mira, and exile target instant or sorcery card with mana value X from our graveyard, and choose an attraction we control that does not have a midway counter on it. Then, we put a midway counter on that attraction. Whenever we visit that attraction, we copy the Exile card and we may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. Mira is completely dependent on attractions. If we plan to craft an attraction deck to run alongside an Is It Spell Slinger EDH build, then Mira is our first choice as the general. If not, then Mira offers us nothing but a 2 4 body for 4 in Is It Colors. And we can do much better than that. Vidalcan Squirrel Whacker is a Vidalcan guest for three in a blue mana. When it enters the battlefield, we roll a six-sided die twice. Its base power becomes a result of the first die roll, and its base toughness becomes a result of the second die roll. If we were to roll one or more six-sided dice, instead we roll them and we may exchange one result with Vidalcan Squirrel Whacker's base power or base toughness. The value of this card is tied to its presence in a dedicated dice rolling build. Outside of this archetype, its value plummets. The Dalkin Squirrel Whacker's best fit is in a dedicated dice rolling deck as a means to manipulate the results of our six sided dice rolls. Black Hole is a sorcery for three and a black mana, which destroys target creature and up to X other target creatures, where X is the number of attractions we visited this turn. There are 21 playable attractions in Commander, and if we choose to construct an attraction deck to coincide with our EDH deck, then we must have, at a minimum, 10 of these 21 attractions in a singleton build. Black Hole is dependent on attractions for it to provide a reasonable return on its mana investment, and without them, it's an overcosted and slow spot removal spell. Lifetime Pass Holder is a 2 1 zombie guest for 1 black mana. It enters the battlefield tapped, and when it dies, we open an attraction. Whenever we roll to visit our attractions, if we roll a 6, we may return Lifetime Pass Holder from our graveyard to the battlefield. This is another card that interacts with attractions, albeit minimally, as the odds of it triggering are 1 in 6 each time we roll a 6-sided die. However, it is a 2-1 zombie for 1 black mana, which could provide a great deal of value in a dedicated zombie deck. Centaur of Attention is a 3-3 centaur performer for 3 and 2 green mana, and when it enters the battlefield, we roll 5 six-sided dice and store the results on it. At the beginning of combat on our turn, we may re-roll any number of Centaur of Attention's stored results. Centaur of Attention gets plus X plus X, where X is the greatest number of stored results on it of the same value. So, the question is, how are your Yahtzee skills? With some lucky dice rolls, Centaur of Attention's ceiling is a 9-9 for a mana value of 5. Note that it does not have evasion. However, in a dedicated dice rolling build where rolling dice is the theme of the deck, Centaur of Attention allows us to roll five six-sided dice at the beginning of combat on our turn, which could yield a treasure trove of peripheral benefits. This card would be strongest in a deck that cares about rolling dice 
versus a deck that wants a big evasionless beater. Exchange of Words is an enchantment for one and two blue mana, and when it enters the battlefield, we choose two target creatures. For as long as Exchange of Words is on the battlefield, exchange the text boxes of those creatures. This card has the potential of creating a lot of havoc. It's an enchantment which gives it staying power on the battlefield. Its text is versatile as any two target creatures are chosen for the text box exchanging. We could choose our own creatures. We could choose our opponent's creatures. We could overpower one of our creatures and nerf one of our opponent's creatures. There are a lot of possibilities, all of which are creature dependent, of course. The unknown of what could be is tantalizing enough to make Exchange of Words a card to consider adding to any commander decks with blue. Captain Rex Nebula is a 2-2 legendary human pilot employee for one in Boros Colors. At the beginning of combat on our turn, target non-land permanent we control becomes a vehicle artifact until end of turn. Its base power and toughness are each equal to its mana value. It has Crew 2 and the Crash Land mechanic. Meaning, whenever this vehicle deals damage, we roll a six-sided die. If the result is equal to this vehicle's mana value, it deals that much damage to any target, and then we sacrifice this vehicle. Note that the vehicle does not need to deal combat damage, so any direct damage dealt also triggers the die roll and, potentially, additional direct damage and then the forced self-sacrifice of the vehicle. This Boros Legend requires a pretty specific 99 for the purposes of accentuating its abilities. Any EDH builds in Boros colors that care about rolling dice and dealing damage have an option at Commander with Captain Rex Nebula. The most dangerous gamer is a 2-2 legendary human gamer guest with death touch for two in Golgari colors. Whenever the most dangerous gamer enters the battlefield or attacks, we open an attraction. Whenever we open an attraction, we put a plus one plus one counter on the most dangerous gamer. Whenever we claim the prize of an attraction, we destroy target permanent. This Golgari legend is dependent on playing with an accompanying attraction deck and would be best served helming a Voltron build for the purposes of taking advantage of its attraction synergies. If we're not playing with attractions, then we're not playing with the most dangerous gamer. Celebrate Thousand is a 3-3 clown robot for five generic mana. At the beginning of combat on our turn, we roll two six-sided dice. Until end of turn, for each result of 1, Celebrate Thousand gets plus 1 plus 1. For a result of 2, it gets Menace. For a result of 3, it gets Vigilance. For a result of 4, it gets Lifelink. For a result of 5, it gets Flying. And for a result of 6, it gets Indestructible. If we roll doubles, Celebrate Thousand also gains Double Strike until end of turn. It has a built-in dice rolling trigger, which, of course, synergizes nicely with a dice rolling theme. However, this artifact could be added to any EDH deck. A 5-5 Double Striker or a 3-3 Double Striker with Menace or Flying until end of turn is not terrible, but the unpredictable nature of dice rolling may act as a barrier to this card's potential inclusion. Monitor Monitor is a 2-5 human employee for 2 and 2 blue mana, and when she enters the battlefield, we open an attraction. Once each turn, we may pay 1 generic mana to re-roll 1 or more dice we rolled. Monitor Monitor's value is dependent on the presence of a coinciding attraction deck or placement into the 99 of a dice rolling themed build. Outside of these two archetypes, she provides very little value. There are many, many ways to open attractions in Infinity, but there are fewer options available for re-rolling dice, placing the focus of value squarely on her dice re-rolling ability. In an appropriate dice rolling themed build, Monitor Monitor could shine. Night Shift of the Living Dead is an enchantment for three and one black mana. After we roll a die, we may pay one life. If we do, we increase or decrease the result of the die roll by one. We can only activate this ability once per turn. Whenever we roll a six, we create a 2-2 black zombie employee creature token. Any EDH deck with a dice rolling theme gains a lot of value by adding Night Shift of the Living Dead. 
if, of course, the deck has black in its color identity. This card provides zero value outside of a dice rolling build. Priority boarding is an enchantment for two and one red mana. Whenever we roll a die, we may reveal the top card of our library, an ability that we can do only once per turn. Whenever we reveal a card with mana value less than the result this way, we exile it. If we do, we may play it this turn. We want to add this card to a dedicated dice rolling build for the purposes of making the top of our library an extension of our hand. Note the text on this card. It does not specify which type of die to roll, meaning that we could include spells and effects that include higher valued dice, like D12s and D20s, which gives us a higher probability of revealing a card with a mana value less than the result of the die roll. Also, the text says whenever we roll a die, we may reveal the top card of our library, meaning if we roll multiple dice in a turn, we have more opportunities to get the highest possible result, increasing the likelihood of exiling a card with a lower mana value from the top of our library. Lastly, the text states that we can only do this ability once per turn, but it does not specify that it has to be our turn. With various dice rolling spells and effects that can be used during our opponent's turns, we can optimize how frequently we use the top of our library as a part of our hand. We can add priority boarding to any dice rolling deck with red and its colored identity. Attempted murder is a sorcery for X and two black mana. We choose target creature and then we roll X six-sided dice. For each even result, we put two minus one minus one counters on that creature. For each odd result, we create a 1-2 blue bird creature token with flying named Stormcrow. Black is the color of big mana, and minus one minus one counters can remove indestructible creatures from the battlefield. If we fail to get odd results from our D6s, then we can create some evasive creature tokens. This spell may be best in a Zaxara the Exemplary build, where it synergizes with Zaxara and is enhanced by a 99 sculpted around optimizing counters and tokens. Manaxa Midway Manager is a 3-3 legendary vampire employee for two and Rakdos colors. Whenever we roll a three or higher, Manaxa gains first strike until end of turn. If the roll was four or higher, then she gains menace until the end of turn. If the roll was five or higher, she gains lifelink until end of turn. Manaxa also has a built-in D6 rolling ability for 6 generic mana. We probably want to avoid playing this vampire employee in non-dice rolling themed builds because her built-in die rolling ability is mana intensive and the die result completely whiffs 1 out of 3 times on average. However... Menaxa thrives in the 99 of dedicated dice rolling decks, with peripheral spells and effects permitting us to roll multiple dice each turn, Menaxa has a higher probability of triggering and reaching her ceiling of a 3-3 first striker with menace and lifelink should not be difficult. The Space Family Goblinson is a 1-1 legendary goblin guest for two in gruel colors and it has trample as long as we rolled three or more dice this turn. Whenever we roll a die, we put a plus one plus one counter on the Space Family Goblinson. It seems tempting to select this goblin guest as the general to a gruel dice rolling commander deck, but we need more dice rolling support before we can start building color specific dice rolling themed decks. In the 99 of a dedicated dice rolling deck, the Space Family Goblinson's trample ability should trigger during each of our turns, and the plus one plus one counter should pile up very very quickly. Bamboozling Beeble is a 1-1 Beeble for one blue mana that has protection from robots. We can pay one generic mana and tap Bamboozling Beeble, and the next time target player would roll one or more dice this turn, instead they roll that many plus one, and we choose one of those rolls to ignore. The target player could be us or the target player could be an opponent. If it is an opponent, then we have the ability to interact with their results by forcing them to ignore one of their roles. More likely than not, we will choose ourselves with Bamboozling Beeble's activated ability. In a dedicated dice rolling build, this is one of the abilities that could help optimize our chances of rolling the results we want 
and at an affordable one generic mana to do so. Down for Repairs is a sorcery for two and one black mana. Target opponent reveals their hand, we choose a non-land card from it, and that player discards it. Then we destroy up to one target attraction that player controls. If we know one or more of our opponents are planning to play with an attraction deck, then this is a great mono black card to include in our deck. We disrupt an opponent's hand and send their most powerful attraction straight to their junkyard. Circuit's Act is a sorcery for two and one red mana. We roll three six-sided dice. For each different result, we create a 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature token. We could end up with three artifact creature tokens for three mana, and in decks that care about creatures, artifacts, or tokens, a potential one for one mana spent is a very solid return. Boing is an instant for one and one blue mana. We return target creature to its owner's hand, and then we roll a six-sided die. If the result is three or less, we scry a number of cards equal to the result. Boing can bounce one of our creatures or one of our opponent's creatures, and we have a 50-50 chance of scrying based on the result of our D6 roll. This card is functional and can operate outside of a dedicated dice rolling build. While in a dice rolling deck, it provides the same level of functionality, but with increased probabilities of scrying due to the presence of dice rolling manipulations inundating the periphery of the 99. Six Sided Die is an instant for two and one black mana. We choose target creature, and then we roll a six sided die. If we roll one, then that creature has a base toughness of one until end of turn. If we roll two, then that creature gets two minus one minus one counters. If we roll three, then six sided die deals three damage to that creature and we gain three life. If we roll four, then that creature gets minus four minus four until end of turn. If we roll five, then we destroy that creature, and if we roll six, we exile the creature instead. This card has some value outside of a dedicated dice rolling build, but its presence in the 99 of one is flavorful and much more impactful due to the presence of peripheral dice rolling spells and effects. Plus, well, it's called six-sided die. It has to be in a dice rolling deck. Now let's find out which 10 eternal legal cards from Infinity could make the greatest impact in the commander format. Clowning Around is a sorcery for one and one white mana. We create two 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature tokens, and then we roll a six-sided die. If the result is equal to or less than the number of robots we control, then we create another 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature token. This is a two-mana sorcery that produces two 1-1 one, one creature tokens with the possibility of creating a third, and when paired with Anointed Procession, there is an excellent chance of creating that third token. In decks with whites that care about tokens or artifact tokens, Clowning Around provides a possible three-token return on the investment of just two mana. That just does not happen in Magic, but it can with Clowning Around. Strength Test Hammer is an equipment for one generic mana and has an equip cost of three generic mana. Whenever we equip creature attacks, we roll a six-sided die. That creature gets plus X plus zero until end of turn, where X is the result. Then, if it has the greatest power or is tied for the greatest power among creatures on the battlefield, we draw a card. Any dice rolling build can consider this card for inclusion into the 99, especially with various spells and effects that can optimize the result of our D6 roll. Any Voltron Commander deck can consider this card for inclusion. In a Voltron archetype, our general is enchanted with auras and carrying equipment for the purposes of being the biggest evasive threat on the battlefield. Let's reward ourselves for this feat by drawing a card from Strength Test Hammer's attack trigger each time we declare it as an attacker. DK, Finder of the Lost, is a 1-4 legendary zombie employee for one in Demir Colors. When she enters the battlefield, we open an attraction. Whenever we roll a 2, each opponent loses 1 life and we gain 1 life. Whenever we roll a 4, we may tap or untap target artifact or creature. Whenever we roll a 6, we may return target creature card from our graveyard to our hand. 
an accompanying attraction deck is necessary to gain value from DK's first ability, and a dedicated dice rolling theme is necessary to gain value from her other three abilities. It's DK's dice rolling abilities that are so, so valuable. We have a 50-50 shot of triggering one of her abilities each time we roll a six-sided die. The odds lessen in our favor whenever we roll any dice bigger than D6s. However, DK's abilities are relevant. We drain each opponent for one life and we gain one life if we roll a two. This could add up to a lot of incidental life drain just by rolling twos from any of the dice we roll during a game. We could tap or untap target artifact or creature if we roll a four, which serves us well both offensively and defensively, especially considering we can untap our own mana rocks. We return a creature card from our graveyard to our hand if we roll a six. These effects do not cost additional mana or other resources. We receive these benefits just from rolling dice peripherally. Although not as powerful coming out of the command zone due to the limited overall support for the dice rolling mechanic, in the 99 of a dedicated dice rolling build with blue and black in its color identity, DK provides tremendous value just by her presence on our side of the battlefield. Clown Car is a 1-1 artifact vehicle for X generic mana. When Clown Car enters the battlefield, we roll X six-sided dice. For each odd result, we create a 1-1 white clown robot artifact creature token. For each even result, we put a plus one plus one counter on clown car. It has crew two. Albeit unpredictable with respect to its plus one plus one counter placement and creature token production, clown car can be a dangerous car in a lot of different decks. When paired with doubling season, we... Well, double the number of plus one plus one counters and clown robot creature tokens. When paired with unbound flourishing, we double the value of X. Since it's a colorless artifact, clown car can be added to any EDH deck, but it seems destined to be included in the 99 of any Zaxara the Exemplary build. A Zaxara deck is sculpted to take advantage of plus one plus one counters and creature tokens. And as a bonus, this Sultai legend has direct synergies with Clown Car since it is an X spell. Saw in Half is an instant for 2 and 1 black mana that destroys target creature. If that creature dies this way, its controller creates two tokens that are copies of that creature, except their base power is half that creature's power, and their base toughness is half that creature's toughness, rounding up each time. A 1-1 one, one becomes two 1-1s. One, a 2-2 two, two becomes two 1-1s. One, a 3-3 one. three, three becomes two 2-2s, two, and so on and so forth. More often than not, we want to target our own creatures with saw and half in order to reap the benefits of their enter the battlefield triggers. We can reap these benefits even further by jamming saw and half into the 99 of a Yarok the Desecrated build, which would double the ETB ability of each creature token saw and half creates. Whether we're interacting with our opponent's board states, fetching lands, or creating creature tokens, Yarok the Desecrated build just became a lot more powerful with saw and half. Space Balerin is a Planeswalker that enters the battlefield with three loyalty counters for two in Azorius colors. Space Balerin has Space Sculptor, which means he divides the battlefield into Alpha, Beta, and Gamma sectors. If a creature isn't assigned to a sector, then its controller assigns it to one and opponents get to assign their creatures first. We can plus one Space Balerin to make creatures in each sector only able to block creatures from that sector until end of turn. We can minus one space Balerian to put a plus one plus one counter on each creature in the sector of our choice. Lastly, we can minus five space Balerian to destroy all creatures in the sector of our choice. Space Balerian can wreak havoc on a battlefield, particularly if we are prepared for it with an abundance of creatures on our side of the battlefield. By manipulating and spot-removing our opponent's creatures from our preferred sector, we should be able to manage the game easily on our path to victory via combat. Combat-focused decks with white and blue in them will love what Spaced Balerin can do for them.
Paradise Lost is an instant for 3 and 2 green mana. We roll two six-sided dice, then we return any number of cards with total mana value X or less from our graveyard to our hand, where X is the total of those results. We then exile Paradise Lost. This card is sneaky, sneaky powerful. Notice that we return any number of cards. The types of cards we return do not matter which means we can return lands. Lands have mana values of zero, and in lands matter builds, this instant speed real estate acquirer pays massive returns on our mana investment, particularly in decks with additional land drop effects and landfall abilities. The floor of the total mana value of non-land cards that can be recurred is two, while the ceiling is 12. Most likely, our dice results land somewhere in between, meaning we return every land and a selection of other cards from our graveyard to our hand at instant speed. This card seems way too good to be an uncommon, and it does not need to reside in the 99 of a dice rolling themed deck for it to be valuable or effective. We can add Paradise Lost to any Lands Matter or Landfall builds confidently. Magar of the Magic Strings is a 3-3 legendary Minotaur performer for 1 in Rakdos Colors. We can pay 1 in Rakdos Colors and note the name of target instant or sorcery card in our graveyard and put it onto the battlefield face down. It's a 3-3 creature with, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, we may create a copy of the card with the noted name. We may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. In addition, if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead of putting it anywhere else. Note that once the 3-3 face-down instant or sorcery creature deals combat damage to a player, we create a copy of the face-down card and cast it for free. This effect is repeatable and not a one-and-done ability. Red offers numerous ways to create additional combat phases, and Rakdos is no stranger to removing opponent's creatures from the battlefield, which paves the way for our 3-3 face-down creatures to deal combat damage to our opponents. There are also scores of back-breaking instant and sorcery spells in Rakdos colors to fuel Magar's engine, many of which can completely tip the game in our favor. As an additional bonus to this theme, Black and Red have many ways to get these instant and sorcery cards into our graveyard through self-mill and impulse card drawing options. Magar also has a mana value of just 3, ensuring that it could hit the battlefield early and often throughout a game of EDH. Magar of the Magic Strings is the most powerful commander option from Infinity. Starlight Spectacular is an enchantment for 2 and 2 white mana that has the Parade mechanic. At the beginning of combat on our turn, we choose creatures we control one at a time until each creature we control has been chosen. Each of those creatures gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn for each creature chosen before it. This is a game-ending enchantment for token decks that want to go wide and is in the best color for creating creature tokens. This anthem effect grows exponentially based on the number of creatures on our side of the battlefield. Pay close attention to the text on this card. Our creatures do not need to attack in order to receive these temporary power and toughness boosts. We can pick and choose which creatures are attacking which opponents and leave our smaller creatures behind. Any token deck with white in its colored identity should welcome this card into the 99 of their commander deck with arms wide open. Edgar Markov, we're talking about you. Comet Stellar Pup is a planeswalker that enters the battlefield with five loyalty counters for two in Boros colors. It has one ability, which is a zero ability that prompts its controller to roll a six-sided die. If the result of this die roll is a one or a two, then we create two 1-1 one, one green squirrel creature tokens with haste and add two loyalty counters to Comet. If the result of the die roll is 3, then we return a card with mana value of 2 or less from our graveyard to our hand, and we remove one loyalty counter from Comet. 
If the result of the die roll is four or five, then Comet deals damage equal to the number of loyalty counters on him to target creature or player, and we remove two loyalty counters from Comet. And lastly, if the die roll is a result of six, then we may activate Comet's loyalty ability two more times this turn, and we add one loyalty counter to Comet. Secondary to the EDH format, this is the most impactful card from Infinity. What's not to like? He creates creature tokens, recurs cards from our graveyard, deals direct damage, and can activate his loyalty abilities multiple times in a turn. With other dice rolling support and effects, not to mention the plethora of Planeswalker-centric abilities available, Comet is a very dangerous addition to a commander deck with red and white in its color identity. And that concludes our review of Unfinity and its impact on the commander format. Did we leave any cards out? Do you have any recommendations for any of the cards discussed in this video? Let us know in the comments section below. This is MTG Burgeoning, your channel for all things magic.